What's up everybody, this is Sticky Tech, and welcome to my circuitry mod graphing guide. I had some requests after I actually set these graphs and these billboards up to kind of show you guys how it's done. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to go and do this whole thing again, but I'm going to at least give you guys the concepts and the tools to do it all. And we'll get one graph going and talk about exactly what what's happening when you try to graph something. So I like to use the advanced small billboard just because it's a good size, not too big, easier to work with. We come in here and we can see we have a blank slate to work with. Now, if you ever used RSS, it's very similar to RSS and how it works. You actually have to create different components to add to this graph. You can do whatever, image, text. We can put a picture of whatever, battery. You can change the size of the battery and you can put it wherever you want. And then if you save it and back out, you have a size of a battery. You can also add text and say that this is a battery. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with all this stuff. There's lots of potential here to do all kinds of things. And what's even better is if we delete this, we have what we're talking about today. We have our graph. You can add a graph on here. So this graph is small, as we can see, it gives you some random points just kind of modeled on here to give you an idea of what you're gonna look like. And what we wanna do is make this graph pretty much take up the entire billboard. And in order to do that, you can take a look at your screen size up here in the top center, 16 by eight. I don't know if that's pixels or what, but we can change our graph to be the total width and most, we're gonna go 600 instead of 800. Most of the height there. So we got our graph. Now you'll notice that there's an orange line around here, but if I save this and I back out, there's actually nothing on the screen. There's nothing on the screen because there's no information in the graph right now. And there's actually no border on a graph. So we come back in here, you can see there's no border. So we need to give it a border. And in order to do that, maybe somebody has a better way to do this. If you do, let me know in the comments. But the way that I do it, come in here, create an image. And then we're actually just gonna use a square. Um, I'm going to pick this first square for this video, but there's squares further down. It just kind of shuffled in here that you can use that are a little more um, sharp. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So if we make this square the same size as our graph, 16 by 6, it gets all fuzzy and kind of like skewed. Um, so you can get you can get better squares to make this look a little bit better. So we're going to do that. Boom, save. Now we have a box around our graph. How do we know what we're gonna graph? Well, you go in here, you're in your graph right now and you have your graph source. And basically what that's saying is, what's the source of information that I wanna display? And in order to set that up, you actually come up here and we're gonna need to input information into this sign, right? So we need to take information from our factory or whatever and input it onto this sign. So we have to create a sign input. And really what that is, is uh, part of wire mod, right? It's just a, it's a, an input, like you'd have an input on a chip or whatever. So we come in here and we're going to create a number array because that's what graphs like. Graphs like to accept number arrays. And we're just going to call it graph data input array, I guess. Now, in order to link that, what if we have two graphs on here? What if we have one graph that we want this array and then one graph that we want another array you have to tell your graph component right here which input to use so we go over to graph source click bind and then we're going to choose our graph data input array up here that we just created so there we go we still don't have anything on our billboard though because we haven't given it any information yet so what i'd like to do first and what i would recommend doing is finding your middle point. So we wanna find out where 50% is and put a line there. Just so we can have a better idea of what our graph is actually showing us. In order to do that, it's pretty easy. Uh, we can create a constant and we can basically give it just a, a, a an array of numbers that's gonna be flat right at 50. In order to do that, you can actually create a number array constant. So we're just gonna call it array. And it's, we're just gonna make it two elements and we're gonna do both of them as 50. So all you do is connect your output array from your constant node into your input on your screen. And then you get this line here, right at 50. So let's go ahead and we're gonna put a line on 50. Unfortunately, your example graph here doesn't show 
your current information that you're giving it. So we go in here, we're gonna insert an image, which is gonna be a line. I like to use this line right here. And we're going to stretch this way out, 1600, and we're gonna make it really skinny. We're gonna make it like 50 pixels tall. And we're gonna kind of guess where our line at 50 is right now. We'll change this to blue. And we're gonna hit save. Now, unfortunately, this is the best way to do that. I was pretty close. You see the red line and the blue line. We can move this down just a little bit. There we go. So we have a blue line at 50. So let's go ahead and we'll add some text and we'll say 50. Make it what? I guess we'll make it blue as well. Make it a little bigger too. And we'll put it here. Now let's do a line at 100 as well because we'll pretend that we're going to do a graph from 0 to 100 percent there's that we can actually just copy this line we go in here we hit copy and we can kind of guess where our 100 is a little high see if we can fix that there a little high still How about that boom okay so there's our 100 so we can copy our 50 text and we can change that to 100. Now, obviously you can make this a lot prettier in your gameplay, but that's pretty much what we need. Uh, you know what? Let's do a zero as well. Zero. Okay. Same thing. Copy the line. Guess where it is. Save. We're a little low. We can go a little high. Save. Boom. There's our zero. Copy the text, move it here, change it to say zero. And we're good to go. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but we have a graph from zero to a hundred. All right, so now that we have our graph more or less set up for what we're gonna want, let's talk about how to give this real-time information now there's a little bit of a quirk to it I don't, I don't know if quirk is the right answer or not but take a look here feel free pause the video whatever uh, this is going to be kind of your bible of making a real-time graph and eventually maybe if you do enough of them you'll remember exactly how it's done but if not this will always be here for you to take a look at so we have our chips here. The only thing I've set up so far is the three constants, a number that's zero, a Boolean that's one, and a number that's 60. And you're actually gonna use that number that's 60 to be uh, the number of seconds that your graph is gonna refresh and the number of units in your array. And the reason I picked 60 for both of those is I wanted a graph that's gonna be 60 minutes long. So you have 60 minutes worth of data and each data point is one minute. You can change those numbers, you can play with them as much as you'd like, but really we just need to go through and hook up these numbers based on the, the graph that I showed you. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, so there we go. We hooked up all the constants and pretty much everything that we could. The only problem is we cannot do any of the array stuff. So if you look here at your outputs, it says unknown. And if you try to connect that over to the next one, it won't let you. It's because we haven't gave it an array to start with. So honestly, the easiest way to do that is create your kind of dummy array. It doesn't have to be 60 units long. It, it will be resized to 60. So we'll go ahead and create a two unit dummy array. We're gonna do two and four, really, really shouldn't matter. And we're going to plug that into our input here on the very first one. Make it a little easier to look at. Now we have a three element number array because we took a two and then we inserted, this is an insert element. Then we inserted a number. And let's just go ahead, connect our outputs. 
All right, and then once you get those connected, take that uh, output of that resize array on the right side and connect it to the input of the insert element in array node to kind of loop it back and you can get rid of your constant. And at this point, we should have a full 60 element array cycling through this. It's actually full of zeros at this point, I believe. But in order to check that, in case you want to do a little bit of troubleshooting, there is this break array node that you can use. And if you take your 60 element array, put it into this break array node, you can actually hover over, hold alt, and look at what numbers are in the array. And in this example, it's just a bunch of zeros. So same as before, if we took this final array and put it into our graph, it's actually just going to be a zero line. There we go. So we're functioning. Now, how do we get real data in here? Well, we have to feed it real data. So the only input I don't have so far on this is the element. And what that means is we have a bunch of zeros in our array. And once we want to start feeding it new information, we put it into that element category. So if we want to give it something like the current efficiency of this assembler, 35%, we can pull that up under productivity down there. So if we scroll down to productivity, we grab that 33%. We can run over to our input, our element input, put it in there. And then once this timer is done, so in 40 seconds, there will be an efficiency number in that array of zeros. So all these zeros We'll now have that 30 whatever percent, whatever it is at the time, right? Okay. Minute passed. We should have, I do, we should have that 35%. So when that timer ran up to 60 seconds, it took a snapshot of that machine that we just pulled the efficiency from. And that efficiency was 35.29%. So we can't see it because our uh, border here on our graph is fat. But if we let it run long enough, you'll start to see actual data be graphed. Just like this. I did want to also show you guys how to make things change color based on their input. So we'll do that really quickly and then we'll wrap this up. I didn't want this video to be too long, so I kind of expedited some of these conversations. Let me know in the comments or whatever. If you guys have anything additional you'd like to ask or if you get hung up or whatever. I always check the comments, so feel free to put your questions in there and we'll see if I can help you out. So we'll actually just do one more billboard here and we'll make something pretty simple. So even on the graph, even on the graphs, the color, when you pick a color, so for example, we pick our line to be red if we want it to be blue or magenta, whatever. Uh, we can do that, but you can also change that from being just a, a whatever you input to be a sign input, like a circuitry mod input. So let's take something simple. Let's, let's just take text and we'll say colored text, make it a little bit bigger, maybe tilt it a little bit. And we can make it whatever color, right? We can make it yellow, make it blue. So let's just see what it looks like as that light blue color. Cool. Now, in your constant node, if instead of picking a number or a string or whatever, you can actually add a color. Color, right here. And you can just pick your color. So we're gonna do red and blue. Here, we'll do red and green, because, you know, red for good and or red for bad and green for good. So we'll do one red and then we'll do one green. We're gonna go like that, save. Okay, now we wanna have basically an if statement. And the reason I'm using this if is because a lot of times you're gonna have, if a number is greater than something, then you want green. If it's less than something, you want red. So the way the if statement works is there should be two inputs. There's a false and a true. So if your Boolean value that you input into the node is true, then do this thing. If it's false, then do this thing. So for our sake, 
we want to take our color. We have red and green. So we're going to take red and we're going to attach that to the false node. And then we're going to take our green and we're going to attach it to the true node. And basically what that means is when you put a one or a zero in here, one is true, then the text will be green. Otherwise it will be red. So we'll go ahead and set up our input, our sign input. It's going to be a color and it's going to be, we'll call it text color. And we're going to attach our text color to that input. Pretty simple. Uh, I don't know what color it's going to be right now. So it's going to stay blue until we actually give it some information. Uh, which right now, if we take the output and we put it on this sign, it's going to be red. Because it's looking for a 1 or a 0, a boolean. And it's getting nothing, so it's getting a 0. So it's red. Now if we give it a 1, let's, let's do a whole other constant node here just to keep things simple. If we do a boolean value of a 1 and input that into our if thing, it turns green. We take that boolean value and change it to no, it turns red. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you, you can see where you could extrapolate that idea. Um, on this example specifically, when this bar is over 100%, it's red. Um, same with this, this circle is actually a, basically like a timer. Once this gets down to a certain amount, I think 10 minutes, this circle starts to count down. It starts to reduce in size and it will turn red whenever that starts to happen. So yeah, hopefully that was enough for you guys. This was, it was pretty simple. Uh, I think the biggest thing was just this, this little design right here. Once you get your mind wrapped around this, it's not too bad. And hopefully that graphic that I had earlier in the video is enough to get you guys along. But yeah, whenever you guys have questions or whatever, put them in the comments and I'll make sure to tackle them. Thank you guys and see you next time.